Switcher South Africa in proud association with Change Cars. Change Cars is a trusted online website because they work with trusted dealers and the best insure in South Africa. Discovery Insure. Welcome back to Switcher South Africa. I'm Nikki Nash as always, and today you guys join me in this beautiful Volkswagen Tiguan 1.4 All Space. So the difference between this one and the normal Tiguan is the name All Space, and in this one you get two extra seats. So I'm gonna tell you every single every single thing you need to know about this vehicle from the exterior, interior the drive and cost of ownership that's a new that's a new segment uh, in our videos cost of ownership big shout out to moose and mr how much for actually telling me to do that and yeah they've pushed me because you guys wanted it and i'm gonna do that from now on. but let's speak about the exterior so the exterior look of this vehicle i like the exterior look of the vehicle very much more especially in the front and the back so in this one this is the tiguan all space with the r line this is the r line model so in previous vw vehicles r line was a package so you could get like a volkswagen tiguan comfort line but with that R line body kit. Now you can't get that. Now there's just a normal Tiguan, Tiguan Life, and Tiguan R line. So R line is not a package anymore. It's a whole model variant now. So I like the look of this vehicle in front and the back, more especially with this one because this one has the IQ lights in the front and at the back. So you get the dynamic indicators up front, uh, dynamic indicators at the back, and you get a beautiful light bar as well that works quite well. And obviously, you guys know that VW and the IQ light system, where when it's on ultra brightness, it dims for you everything so high beam this side but this side won't be high beam so there's a video where i did of a polo so just click the link in the description box below to see how the volkswagen iq lights work but as you look at the vehicle i like it i'm still not used to how big the vehicle is obviously because it looks slightly bigger than a normal tiguan at the back because of the two because there's two seats at the back so it looks long it is quite big but when you're inside the vehicle you don't feel how big it is and speaking of the interior of the vehicle when you jump into the interior of the vehicle you can tell the vw nothing major in terms of difference compared to any other volkswagen so compared to the pre-facelift because it's a facelift to go on compared to a free facelift um to go on what you get here is that instead of actual physical buttons by the steering wheel you get haptic feedback um, buttons and then also the uh, the screen the infotainment system is a bit different from the preface look but everywhere else is completely the same as the normal one gear lever is different so gear lever is different the climate control is different so on the previous on the preface lift you still get like um physical touch buttons here's haptic feedback you won't have a problem with them i enjoy them um the ones that i don't really necessarily enjoy is the ones on the steering wheel but i'm glad to report that vw is actually reversing back to the previous way so actual buttons so interior looks beautiful the seats as well be quite hugging they give you what you want they come they comfortable as well and the written r line this this is the r line so that you are i mean so that you know that you're in and the r line model so i do like the seats the the seats i think they are the same as the ones of the tiguan r i'm not too sure the tiguan r's ones might be slightly a bit better in terms of hugging but otherwise yeah it's more or less the same um but i've told you the interior now it's time to speak about the driver vehicle so this vehicle is the 1.4 liter um producing 110 kilowatts and 320 newton meters of torque so having said that you think that oh this power plant is not enough for the vehicle but for what the vehicle is for me um i've had the vehicle not fully loaded to seven people but i've had it with five people including myself and for me that was more than enough it did give me what the vehicle is meant for the car does go it didn't give me that power we have been like yeah i want to get here to that robot number one no because that's not what this vehicle is for but for me from family traveling and all of that this vehicle will, will do good for you and fuel efficiency of this vehicle you're looking the lowest i average is 6.2 and that's with using the adaptive cruise control at set at 100 and set, set at 100 kilometers sometimes I would go to 120 but that was the lowest i went 6.2 so fuel efficiency on the fuel efficiency side this vehicle does do well you will get over 600 k's on one tank in this vehicle easily so so i like that about the vehicle the interior the feeling of the vehicle inside as well when you're driving it doesn't feel as big as you'd think it is so in terms of engines right there is three models three engines that you can choose from so there is the one that i'm currently in this is the this is the 1.4 liter that's the base entry level engine that you can get the, the lowest and then you get a two liter petrol that produces 162 um, kilowatts i'm not too sure about the torque i'll put it um, in the description box below and then you get a, a diesel variant of this vehicle so you can which produces 130 kilowatts and um, which one is the one to go for i haven't driven the diesel or the 162 162 kilowatt one but knowing vw i would like to believe that both those offerings are quite good um, in terms of the drive and if you want a bit more power than the, 
than 1.4 obviously the 162 will get the job done but if you're a diesel fan and fuel efficiency and all of that then go for the diesel so now, now to tell you about those three important things that we always get to do i like the car would i buy the car would i recommend the car um actually no i'm skipping three important things three things i like three things i don't like about the vehicle and you know how we do this i start with the bad number one that i don't like about this vehicle is the haptic feedback buttons on the steering wheel i'm not a fan of them um it's not my cup of coffee because sometimes when you're gonna decrease the volume it doesn't decrease it as fast as you'd want it to or you know if you're to increase it, it doesn't increase it as fast as you'd want it to and the second thing i don't like about this vehicle i honestly do not have um obviously the turbo lag you know, but that's found in vw vehicles across the board so i don't even include that in the, the things i don't like it more but above the haptic feedback thing i there's literally nothing else um obviously this specific unit doesn't have a panoramic sunroof but i can't blame you can opt for pandemic sandroof so yeah that's with regards to what i do like about this vehicle is obviously the haptic feedback buttons but other than that there's nothing else i don't like the things i like about the car i like the look of the vehicle in front and at the back with those dynamic with those dynamic um, indicators the second thing i like about the car is the overall feel of the vehicle when you're inside and the third thing i like about the car is to drive the vehicle um it does get the job done you will um enjoy being in the vehicle actually there is something second thing that i do like i just remember now as i'm driving is that this vehicle comes with the six speed dsg and you only get the seven speed dsg and gearbox on the two liter vehicle so the two liter 162 kilowatt petrol engine and the two liter turbo diesel vehicle so uh, why well, can't put why didn't vw just put this the seven speed in here i don't know they know what they're doing but there's that's the other thing i don't like about the vehicle but now time to tell you about those three important things and before i do that cost of ownership right actually i'll do cost of ownership at the recommendation those important questions do i like the car would i buy the car would i recommend the car do i like the car yes would i buy the car yes would i recommend the vehicle yes so in terms of recommendation i like this vehicle for what it is it's just that it gets very pricey you know when you especially the one i'm in starts at 744,000 rand and with those options that those cars pick because it has adaptive cruise control iq lights it can park itself all those fancy things the car does get quite pricey and i honestly feel that is where the downfall of this vehicle is um in terms of that i would recommend it so look at it like this my previous test car was the cherry to go 8 pro max and that's a seven seater and that essentially competes with this but it's a good hundred thousand cheaper than this and all of those things you know so there is that but considering the vehicle that we're in today i would recommend it but i would tell you look elsewhere and being a seven seater depending on the type of person you are with this vehicle you are touching for the Everest money but a tiguan buy an Everest buy not the same person but if you are at that point where you wanna you might just be like actually let me just buy let me just buy a ford Everest or let me just buy a fortuna but you know if you want it, people that want it to go on they want it to go on so in terms of the price of the vehicle this one standard the um, the r line right the one i'm in starts at 744,000 rand but you can get into any tiguan for just for just over 600,000 rand so that's with regards to the price of the vehicle cost of ownership let's wrap it up with the cost of ownership so the specific one right if you're financing it at an interest rate of 12 0.25 percent you're looking at um a monthly insurance a monthly premium of 16,600 rand and with regards to fuel it's kind of as a 60 liter tank and at the current price at the current fuel price before the price drop tomorrow um you're looking at 1.4 on a full tank so in a month depending on how far you'd go you're essentially looking on spending 18,000 rand on this vehicle before insurance the reason I'm not including insurance is because if I insure a Tiguan All Space and someone who's 40 years old insures a Tiguan All Space, it will not be the same. Our premiums will not be the same. So depending on the type of person you are, your premium may be less, may be more. So I don't include insurance. But total co total co total cost of ownership without insurance for this vehicle, you're looking at you're looking at basically 18,000 rand and. I've told you every single thing you need to know. Big shout out to Muzi and Mr. How much cost of ownership does feel good. And you know, you're saying, you know, you do your research, you do say it. But yeah, um, I've told you every single thing you need to know. Tell me what you think about the car. Tell me if you like it. And I'm signing out. I'm standing at a robot in traffic. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. What is the next one? I'm not too sure. You, you don't know. We never know. But yeah, see you in the next one.